In today's video, we'll be talking about attorney-client privilege, one of the most important things you need to remember whenever you're talking to a lawyer like me. That's why it's very important for you to stay until the very end of this video where I will be sharing with you the top common mistakes people make that could be devastating for your case if you do them. So let's dive in. Hi there, my name is Catherine. I'm a lawyer and I think differently. What is attorney-client privilege? It is basically the right to protect confidential information that that you shared with your lawyer to get legal services. Here's another way of thinking about it. Whenever you talk to your lawyer, you're basically starting off with, can you keep a secret? Then anything else that comes out of your mouth after that, we as your lawyer must keep a secret when it's related to your legal needs. We're kind of like priests, if you think about it, where you go to confess to your priest and the priest can't say anything. We, as your lawyer, when you tell us confidential information, we can't tell anyone else as well what you told us. That's what attorney-client privilege is. What is the purpose? of the attorney-client privilege. There are two things. The first one is to protect the client's confidential information. The second is to encourage both the client and the lawyer to talk freely about the case and get as much information as possible. For example, I always tell my clients, tell me everything you know about the car accident so that I can better help you. Once you tell that to me, then I will be the keeper of your secrets. So don't worry, tell me everything, the good and the bad, and I will keep it a secret. If you want to know what to tell your lawyer about your car accident, make sure to go ahead and check out my videos over here where I created a playlist about car accident videos that you need to know about. Go ahead and check that out whenever you get a chance and also I will put the link in the description below so you can watch it at a later time. Who will keep your secret? Obviously the lawyer will keep your secret as well as the lawyer's agents. That means everyone else who works at the firm will keep your secret such as the secretary and the paralegals and any other staff at the firm. So whenever you talk to a paralegal on the phone or by email, then he or she will also keep your secret even though you told it to the paralegal. They will be all working together for you. Whose secrets do we lawyers keep? It applies to current clients, former clients, and even potential clients. That's why even if you call a lawyer for a consultation, whether or not you hired a lawyer, the lawyer will still need to keep your information confidential because it's related to asking for legal advice. In my other video where I talk about the three people you should call within 24 hours after a car crash, I mentioned that you need to call a lawyer for a free consultation. Most lawyers offer free consultation. For example, I offer free consultation. A lot of my lawyer friends offer free consultation. Whenever someone calls us, even for a free consultation, I have to keep those confidential as well, whether or not they hire me. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a link in the description below so you know what you need to do after you get into a car accident and also who else you're supposed to call. Who owns the privilege? Or who does the privilege belong to? The privilege belongs to the client, not the lawyer. That's why if the client refuses to disclose that confidential information in court, the lawyer may be prevented from revealing that information. You own that privilege. How does the attorney-client privilege actually work? Basically, the client and the attorney cannot be compelled to disclose confidential information if the client doesn't want to. Also, even when the client passes away, the lawyer still may not disclose the confidential information. So you can take your secrets to your grave. But even though lawyers must keep your secrets confidential, there's still some things that clients do that waives that privilege and allows us to disclose that confidential information. So make sure to stay until the very end of this video where I talk about all those common mistakes that you do not want to do. How do you as the client waive the privilege or basically break the privilege? Since you own the privilege, the client is the only one who can break the privilege. The lawyer can't break it. And you do that by doing either two things. One is by actually saying, I waive the attorney-client privilege, which means I allow my attorney to go ahead and disclose that information. The other second thing is, which is the most common, is you indirectly waive that privilege. And we'll talk about examples of that. Before we move on, you have to know this exception to the rule. The exception is the lawyer must disclose the confidential information to prevent a crime or a fraudulent act that will likely result in substantial bodily harm or even death of another person. So if someone tells me they're going to kill someone, I'm not required to keep that confidential. I can call the police and let them know. Before I tell you the top common mistakes people make in breaking their attorney-client privilege, make sure to type in the comment below the word secret so I know that you 
you got to this part of the video and you're still listening and keeping your secret. The top common mistakes people make in breaking the attorney-client privilege is they tell their friends and family what they told their lawyers. Nope. How do they do this? They basically call their friends and family or they text them or they post it on social media. They share what they told their lawyers and they break their privilege that way. I know it's really hard when you're trying to not tell your close friends or your family members what is happening in your case. It's okay, just tell them, sorry, my lawyer told me not to tell you. Blame it on us, the lawyer, so that they won't get upset with you for not sharing your secrets with them. Another thing you can tell your close friends and family members that you cannot share your secrets with them is because it's for their own protection. Yes, for their own protection because the people you share the information about your car accident to, they will be involved in your claim or in your lawsuit or even at trial. When it used to be a defense counsel and I find out that the plaintiff or the person involved in the car accident told so and so and so and so and so and so about the car accident, my job is to go ahead and take the depositions of every single one that the plaintiff talked to. To so just imagine your friends and family members that you're talking to will be deposed when the other party finds out that you've been telling them about it. Another common mistake people make that breaks the attorney-client privilege is by discussing the confidential information in a public place where other people can hear it. For example, whenever I call my client or have a Zoom meeting with them, I tell them, are you alone in the room? Because if someone else is there, whatever you tell me, it will break the privilege. So make sure that when your lawyer calls you and you're in a room, even with one other person, excuse yourself and say, excuse me, I just need to take this call outside or somewhere else where it's just gonna be you and no one else will hear what you're telling your lawyer. That way, you do not accidentally break the privilege. If you learned something new from this video, go ahead and click subscribe. If you've been watching my videos, you know that my son created this for me in support of my YouTube video. So please go ahead and click subscribe, that red button right there, click it now, and it will help our channel make videos that help people like you. Also, if you want to know very important things that you need to do after a car accident, make sure to check out our other videos here where if you watch them, it will help you with your stress level and make you less confused and stressed out with this complicated process that happens after a car crash. We will also put the link in the description below so you can go check them out as well. If there's any topic that you want us to talk about, just go ahead and put that in the comment below. But for the next video, we'll be talking about where the money comes from to pay you for your pain and suffering, your injuries, and your property damage. In my other videos, I'm sure you've heard me saying that the money comes out of the insurance company's pocket, not really the other driver's pocket. But in our next video, I'll talk about specifically where the insurance company gets that money to pay you. So make sure to hit that notification bell so when our next video comes out, you'll be notified. We post our videos every Friday, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.